Welcome to Field Sports Britain. Coming up, hot shot shooting the Predator I view. We have hunting YouTube and in news we have the Red Deer who loves pheasant shooting. First, Roy is performing the rutting rumba rhythm that attracts more than just fallow. Dawn, and thank goodness Roy has his cup of Costa tea to squeeze out the butterfly from the chrysalis. But he's still a little grumpy bear. You find after many years of working with Field Sports Channel that it's a one way street. <coughs> the great snorting fellow. Chris and I would have had a couple, gone home. Breakfast. Oh, liver, bacon, eggs. But no. Leaving his cup half empty, wear off rutting. The Argo is stopped in its tracks by the girls, who are determined to stand between us and the boys. And unfortunately, they're out feeding on the acorns, and they're right in the path that we want to go to, and it's the only path that we can use to get into the rutting stand. So we're just going to give them five or ten minutes to see if they, they wander off of their own accord. If they don't, then we're going to have to go in and try somewhere else, because if we push them too hard, They'll just go in there and lift every deer on the rutting stand and that'll be the end of it. So we're just going to have to take it very slowly and play it by ear. Ideally we want grunting and that wonderful clash of antlers, but nothing. With the does now gone, we can at least try and see if there's any action. It's all quiet, so Roy tries to stir things up a bit with some antler rattling. This should inspire a territorial buck to break cover to see who's on his manor. Strangely, it brings in a fox. It stops dead in its tracks. It would be dead in its tracks normally, but Roy wants to see how it reacts to the call. I think he was probably curious seeing what was going on, but I would have thought that yeah, he was, he was just going about his course of uh, his hunting in the morning. There's a lot of rabbits in there. So I think it was just uh, incidental that we were there, you know, having a bit of a, uh, a clatter about. He absolutely wasn't bothered by it at all. So he boldly came in and was just sort of looking around, seeing what was going on. What I wanted to try and do was just have a squeak and just watch his behaviour. And as soon as we started squeaking, he just tilted his head, got the sound of it, figured out where it was. And instead of coming directly into us across the opening, he worked his way around and bolted straight out to get the wind to come into whatever was making the sound. And unfortunately then he picked up our scent and disappeared. But it really does highlight when you are foxing to try and make sure that there's no cover directly downwind that they can sneak up in on you. Because you know the amount of foxes that do do that, you're squeaking, you think you haven't got a response, you, know, you don't think there's anything going on. Um, and then all of a sudden you see a, a fox disappearing off behind you. So it really does just go to highlight the, you know, the importance of position when you're calling. But again, very interesting that he was coming in, not bothered by the, the clattering of the antlers at all. Goodbye, Fox, or should that be au revoir? On the other side of the estate, Roy's approach to the other rutting stand is careful and considered. It's vital not to spook the outer circle of the herd before getting to the action. We get away with some pretty tight situations. Standing totally still really works, most of the time. Most definitely, I mean, we saw it on that doe earlier, didn't we? That doe made us, or, or made something, to start off with. And she was staring and staring and staring, and every muscle in your, in your body is aching and screaming to move, and you just want to sort of oh, relax a little bit, but you don't. If you do, then the slightest movement will give you away and they'll be off. And it, it, she watched and stared, and she kept vigil and then all of a sudden she just relaxed a little bit you could see her ears relaxed and she started chewing again and very quickly she just got straight back down and started feeding on the chestnuts again normally when they start feeding again they'll give it a couple of seconds and bolt their head back up again looking just to see if what they've been staring at has moved or is moving so it's always worth giving them a few seconds but she didn't do it the first time the second time when we were trying to come round her we were trying to drop back down into the valley a little bit and move our way round she just made movement of one of us and again bolted upright and we couldn't get away with it the second time. We stayed very, very still for as long as we could and all of a sudden she just took a dislike and, and just let out a couple of small barks and she was aware and then she was off. So you can get away with it most times but if you try and push the boundaries it, uh, it does backfire. Having got around the two does and within 200 yards of the rutting stand we spot this young buck.
Even though he stares right at us, he continues to move towards us. Roy tells Chris to get on the sticks. He drops the deer at 30 yards. Unlike the stinky mature animals, he'll make good eating. We saw him feeding up on the, uh, the chestnuts here and was just making our way in. He was probably no more than about 25, 30 yards there. So I just beckoned Chris in. He was, uh, he was stalking up behind us. And uh, I, I said to Chris we'd take him out this morning and try and find him a decent buck. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think we've achieved that, but <laughs> at least he shot a buck. But, yeah, Chris has been very kind to take us out in the past on a, a few of his bits, so just returning the favours. We'll get him quickly sorted out and then we'll just head back over. Now we've made a bit of a noise, we'll go to one of my favourite little foxing spots and just see if we can get a quick reaction before we head on home and uh, start cooking up some liver. Chris does a suspended granic, which makes life much easier. If the rot was on, we didn't hear it, but with Roy's hearing, he'd be lucky to hear it if it was going on in the next room. The postman sharing his round there. Now, someone who usually disappears on hearing the word round, it's David on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. A shoot in Devon adopted a red deer and now it's part of the beating line. After seeing it abandoned by its mother, Mornicott shoot raised the red calf on lamb's milk and released him onto the chute when he was old enough. He now shuns other red deer but enjoys putting up pheasants on shoot days and likes to join the guns for a drink between drives. Wildfowlers are celebrating a record number of geese at Montrose Basin in Angus. There are now almost 80,000 birds beating the previous record of 65,000 set in 2010. There's a crop of new field sports websites out there. HuntTrophy.com site is for international hunters, outfitters, hunting accessories companies and the hunting media, whereas shitshooters.co.uk is set up in Britain to ridicule your friends on how badly they shoot, whether it's clay or game. The joint master and two huntsmen of a Northumberland hunt have been found guilty of fox hunting, even though no fox was harmed. They were convicted of hunting a wild mammal with dogs, though the judge said that convictions were so rare that he had no guidelines for sentencing. He fined the master and staff of the College Valley and Northumberland hunt. A Texas cheerleader who also hunts has launched her own YouTube show, and it's already sponsored by Remington. 20-year-old Kendall Jones reacted coolly when she came under fire in the media and online for posting pictures of herself with games she'd shot. Now the first episode of Kendall Jones, Game On, is out. A Japanese man has been sent to jail for two years for printing a 3D gun. 28-year-old Yoshimoto Imura was found guilty of manufacturing guns with a 3D printer and attempting to emasculate the country's strictly enforced gun laws. He was found in possession of six weapons, two of which could fire lethal bullets. He also had a 3D printer at home, but no ammunition for the guns. In Japan, you can only own firearms for hunting and sport shooting after a lengthy licensing period. And finally, a British filmmaker in Canada left his GoPro on a bridge to get some up close and personal shots of grizzlies. John Kitchen had been collecting footage of grizzlies in Night Inlet on British Columbia's west coast when a grizzly stole his GoPro and chewed it. You are now up to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David. Next up, it's pigeon shooting like you've never seen it before. It's a little known fact that Predator learned how to shoot during an afternoon spent in a hide with Crowman. 
and he obviously didn't know he was there, as Mr Predator had spent the previous week studying how Mr Crow builds a hide. And let's just say he's pimped his spacecraft in Jack Pike English Oak. Anyway, our real-life pigeon predator is out again and he's setting up shop on another abandoned crop that's worth keeping an eye on at this time of year. You see, I've been picking up some barley. We've got whole ears. And with barley, it takes a lot longer to germinate. It's, uh, this barley's been cut now since uh, the first week of July this has been cut. And we've had rain, we've had hot weather, and it's just not germinated. So that's why the pigeons are here. And winter barley stubbles or, or spring barley stubbles, keep an eye on them because they tend to, to leave them. That's what they've done here. They've left this stubble and gone off onto the drilling and, and other stuff. But then they, because they prefer other stuff to the barley because you've got the whiskers on the barley, they don't like that so much. Now they've got wet, they've all gone brittle and it's, it's, they're not spiky. They get stuck in their throats, they don't like all that. So they, they come back on this as a last resort. You've got one that's germinated there and then the others are, they haven't germinated. So of course the pigeons are just, they just clear that up. So a few weeks ago it was beans. Now barley can be added to the list of possible food sources. From food sources to heat sources. We're using the guide IR510 from Thomas Jacks. The ability to film through it offers all sorts of interesting results. The quality is good enough to show a flock of ferals on the other side of the field, and feathers flying off birds as Andy makes contact. What is particular fun is seeing the wad, not the shot, offering a heat signature. Ruby Ruby looks particularly vivid. If she wasn't here, the guide could, of course, help locate the birds tucked away in a crop. Back to normal vision, and Andy has kept the hide away from the field margin. It's less cover, but it means he can shoot behind him. Tucked underneath, a lot of birds would be lost in the foliage. Now it's fair to say that Andy thought it was going to be a bonanza day. He's packed plenty of clear pigeon cartridges, but uncharacteristically for Crow, it's not as busy as he'd expect. There's a lot of birds here yesterday. Um, don't know where they've gone to die. They certainly ain't here. I'll we end up with 50. Which would be quite nice. I'm happy with it. A few tame ones here at the moment. They get on it again in the end. I just love to know where they've gone to die. Certainly not coming now. You're getting your bonds. It's just nice to be out with you, David. Really enjoy that. As Andy says, it's worth trying to move the birds on a few days before you plan to shoot it just to gauge how much they want it. If they come back to the field within half an hour, chances are they're locked on. Andy plays with the pattern. He's got the larger-than-life A1 decoys out today, as well as their whirlies. The thermal shows they're working hard. The thermal also shows up the fresh birds as opposed to the weak old ones that Andy's used for the pattern. As well as some good pigeons, there's a token crow, plus a fox heading away from the local pheasant shoot a mile away. And it's the pheasant shooting that might have kept the pigeons from homing in here. We started at 11.30am and every bird's crop is empty apart from one of the last birds Andy shoots at 3pm. Well this one, last one I just shot, he's got bitch nuts in his crop. I'll see a few pigeons early on over the back over there on in the wood there's a few beech trees in there and that's what he's been on. They go on that over preference over anything else because it's got so much protein in it. It's the first one we shot today with anything in it. Maybe we should get Andy to produce a league table of the wood pigeon's most favourite grub. Unbelievable, isn't it? As we prepare to pack up, Andy uses the thermal to locate a missing woody, but Ruby gets there first. It adds to a bag of 50 birds. Pretty good as barley was off the menu, but they'll be back. Now, from a pigeon hide in the great British countryside to the wider world of hunting and shooting, on YouTube it is Hunting YouTube.
This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. Christopher Clausen is out after moose in Norway on land owned by forestry and hunting cabin company Maruka Brook, which has got more than 300,000 acres, about 500 square miles, in the middle of the country. White bone reflection is on Tajon Ranch in California for an elk hunt. It's a bit schmaltzy to start with about his dad's best mate, but stay with it. For fox, roe, and elk in the crosshairs, watch this action packed video. That's Scandinavian elk, of course, what Americans call moose and not what Americans call elk. This is unusual. Hazel grouse hunting in Finland appears to consist of sitting still for a long period, whistling, then shooting at a tree, and a grouse falls out of it. Waterfowl shooting in Scandinavia is equally strange to us Anglo Saxons. Instead of waiting for the duck to fly towards the water, you wait for them to emerge from under the water. Not a hardcore hunting channel, Jack on the Go show is mainly concerned with cookery, so it is good to see him dressed up in button down shirt and four pocket pants to go out after turkeys in Middle Tennessee. We're off to Alberta in Canada in this film to go black bear hunting with a crossbow. The bloke from Burnt Lake Outfitters keeps you on the edge of your high seat as he waits for the right moment to take the shot. And finally, ever wondered how strong a bear is? This film by Alberta Parks Service shows a bear trap weighing hundreds of pounds getting tossed about not unlike a toy. Still think it would be fun to get close to a bear? Asks Alberta Parks. That's it for this week. If you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top 8, send it in via YouTube or email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Well, we are back next week. Please subscribe or go to our webpage, fieldsportschannel.tv, where you can click and like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter. Pop your email address into our constant contact box and we'll send you our email about our weekly show, Field Sports Britain, that's out at 7pm UK time every Wednesday. This has been Field Sports Britain. Good hunting, good shooting, good fishing, and goodbye. <laughs>